Hi, this is Dave O'Toole, and that's me painting at double speed. We filmed this at about six frames per second, and then I'm going to be doing, uh, playing it back at 12 frames per second. So we started out with a layer of white microspheres, that is glass microspheres mixed with titanium white acrylic paint, applied with the knife, smoothed out with the brush, quick spritz of water, and now I begin applying color for the background on a floral abstract. I painted it in about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and this double speed has condensed it down to about 16 or 17 minutes. So I begin to lay in some vertical stripes. This is a vertical canvas, and so I'm going to um, start with vertical stripes and then gradually begin to bring a sense of foreground and background. Now, a lot of the paintings I've been doing are a little bit all over textured, kind of the Jackson Pollock style where there's no particular foreground or background. Everywhere seems to have some, some texture. This painting is a little bit different in that um, it, it has a more distinct sense of figure and ground. And it's a floral abstract based on the pink quill tillandsia. The pink quill tillandsia is a type of air plant, so-called air plant, and they attach themselves to rocks or other plants or moss rather than growing roots into the soil. So, um, there was a color Liquitex Medium Magenta that had a very nice uh, resonance with photos that I had seen of the pink quill. So now that I have some rainbowy colors in the background, I start to lay in some earth tones because this is a, this plant is going to be you know on a on a piece of wood like on a tree branch or rotting wood or something like that, um, and so and then I begin to introduce some curves because I don't just want to have up and down stripes. I want to start to break it up a little bit. Now, I begin, you can see one, two, three. I have put in a couple of areas of this bright pink for the pink quill. So there are going to be three main uh, pink pieces and you'll see that I developed them in the foreground a bit more in a, in a short while. So now notice that all of the white that we started with, almost all the white we started with is either tinted or obscured. And in, this is Alla Prima style with very thick paint that dries more slowly because of the microspheres so I can just lay it on as thick as I want. So now I begin to add some white, ironically, to restore some parts of the background. So we start with the background, you know, in the mid-tones then introduce some darks, then pop back to white. Now I'm adding some even more white. This is made with uh, Poraver, P-O-R-A-V-E-R. -E this is a recycled expanded glass microsphere that's available in a, a quite fine size, but also some coarse sizes. And this is the finest they make. These range from about 40 to 125 microns, and a micron being a, um, uh, a thousandth of a meter. A, th a thousandth of a millimeter, I'm sorry. So, continuing to lay some white in there and refining some parts of the background. And then I think rather soon I'll be getting started with the sgraffito, the scratching. Sgraffito, S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O, is Italian for scratching. And it's the idea is that you take, um, you know, not the, not the soft brush handle, but something like the uh, not the brush bristles, but something like the other end of a brush, the pointy end of a brush, um, a paint shaper, a pin, a toothpick. In my case, I'm going to be using the tips of these uh, stainless steel painting knives that I use, um, which that should be coming up in a moment, this graffito. So a little bit of mixing, a little bit of getting some new colors on my palette. I'm now going to take the whites that I reintroduced in the background, especially toward the upper left, and in a few other areas introduced that looks to me like a cobalt or a cerulean, not cobalt blue, but like a cerulean blue. I am uh, recording this voiceover weeks after the fact of having painted this, so I don't quite recall every single color that I used. I do recall that the medium magenta is um, used for the pink blossoms, and you'll see that I flesh them out a little later. Now I'm beginning this graffito, scratching all these lines in, and you'll be able to see them a little bit more effectively at the end of the video when I show a high res uh, close up of the final piece. 
Now I'm beginning to modify the darks and blend things in. Again, scratching over from the background through the foreground and into the background again, which cuts the image subtly. It cuts the contours, and that's part of the Gestalt principles of visual perception called broken contour, which I have used quite a bit during the pandemic. Um, my art has changed a lot during the pandemic. First of all, you know, especially during the early months, being stuck at home a lot meant that I was painting a lot. So. Um, it's, it's hard to express how it's affected me, how it's affected everyone, but for me, it's, it's pushed me into creative expression. So I'm now beginning to take, I want to set the foreground apart from the background more, create a little more depth. So I am adding more, uh, glass microspheres mixed with white acrylic. Okay, this is my basic go-to base layer for a la prima style. And once again, alla prima means at first attempt in Italian. And what you're getting out of that is that you work wet and wet, um, all with wet paint. You know, you don't wait for layers to dry um, and start on it again a few days later and, and let it sit and start on it again. You do one session consisting, you know, of a couple of hours. Um, oil painters may be able to spend longer on alla prima, but uh, with acrylic, a few you know, maybe a, two hours is just about the maximum, depending on thickness. Uh, you can get a little more with additives, but... And at each stage, I'm coming back in after applying color and unifying those new paints, those newly applied sections of paint by cutting across them with Sgraffito. And I'm not just doing it willy-nilly, I'm keeping the strokes largely vertical with some horizontal contrasted strokes, because again, this is a vertical painting, vertically oriented painting. So now this is going to be a, a section where I spend some time integrating um, toned areas of the background that may be a little darker with light mixing in some white paint and lighter paint and light blues and light greens. You can see in the background on the top right and bottom right, there's a, a, a bluish blues and greens. And then I bring some stronger blues into the lower left here in order to unify the left side and the right side of the backgrounds. And as you'll see soon, in order to make it pop more, I blend even more white into those regions. Now, the pink quill to the right side and the one in the center are, are reasonably well developed, but the one near the top left looks a tiny bit undeveloped. So you'll see that I come back in with the magenta shortly. All right, back to the canvas. We have got, I am beginning to put little bits of red, a few just very little sparks. I believe that's a pyrrole red and not a cadmium. To add a few, you know, if you, if you put the right spot of a rich color against colors that are more faded and, and in between faded colors and black, you get, um, it almost can look like a jewel-like effect if you make little spots and dibs and dabs of that color. So now I'm bringing back some of the earth tones uh, that looks to me like burnt umber and maybe a little bit of raw sienna. And now I'm doing a little scritching and scratching again. Again, keeping it largely up and down, but having some slanted Sgraffito to, to provide contrast. And there I think that's some anthraquinone blue. Just to, you know, it's important to break up, not monotony, but it's important to vary things subtly. You know, I like to use, if I'm if I'm gonna have blue in the painting, it's rarely just gonna be one blue. I want a little of this, a little of that. The exception here is that the pink parts of the painting are all that medium magenta, but I blend the edges so that it's not, you know, obviously you don't want it to look tacked on. So 
There's a painter, um, Virginia Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, and she was she was real big in the 80s. I think she's still around working, but um, one of the things I learned from her book, Discovering the Inner Eye, is that you can alternate between differentiating, in other words, making two parts of the painting look different from each other by adding or removing paint, and unifying, meaning bridging two areas of painting and either making them look similar or at least making them seem to fit together. Differentiation here is adding paint. Unifying is the sgraffito. Is unifying is taking white and dialing that into various areas of the background. And as you can see, I'm now going to increase the contrast by adding plain white on top and then blending it some. Again, we're watching this at about double speed. And what you'll see is that I'm going to begin to work all around the borders of the image and vignette this in white. It's not going to be a, a, a complete vignette, and I, I believe the lower left corner remains blue as it is, although maybe it gets some more white. And then, that, so that's the differentiation. I've taken the foreground, and in the last few seconds of this video, I've vignetted the, the border with white. Then I'm going to integrate the vignetting, again, differentiating and unifying. I'm going to integrate the white with the foreground by doing more sgraffito and more blending. Um, the microspheres, because they roll past one another like ball bearings, make for really sharp, precise sgraffito because you do not pull the paint film along with you with the knife as you go. You can, you can draw out very fine lines that uh, might otherwise be a little bit of a pain to do in acrylic because with acrylic typically you're limited by the beading of water you're limited by the surface tension of the water which is going to cause curvature the microspheres um, if they're sufficiently dense change all that and you can you can get some very fine um, points very thin lines all right a little more earth tone blending some yellow ochre one of the oldest pigments used in any kind of painting, including cave painting. Looks like I added some ultramarine blue to that to make some green in the corner. I picture this pink quill with bark and um, uh, roots and like sand and gravel and... Now here's adding a little bit of what looks like, uh, what looks like a burnt sienna. We're getting closer to the final artwork. So, a little bit more earth tone, some more yellow ochre. Once you get some here, you gotta get some there, you know? You can't have, let any place be totally innocent, in my opinion. One way to unify two areas, say one is the color A and another is color B, that's to take a third color C and use broken color to unify the two areas, whether you're doing a transparent glaze over something that's dried, or as if working in ala prima here, just going right on top as it's wet. So, more integration. I'm taking the same color as the vignetting, as the edging, which is titanium white, and I'm going over not all of, but parts of the foreground to integrate the background with the foreground some more. If you do it too much, the distinction disappears and the overall look is, you know, more flat, more of the all over Jackson Pollock. But if you leave areas of vignetting of white or the other colors or the background for the eye to rest, places where there is no detail or very little or very subtle gradation of color, um, there's more space in the painting than in Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock's can be overwhelming because the whole canvas is so busy. Um, so we are drawing to a close here. 
and some a little bit more scraffito, a little bit, a um, little bit of this, a little bit of that. I put a few drops here and there. Some more vertical lines, a few crisscrossing horizontal and diagonal lines. And that took, before time lapse, about 35 minutes.